I'm so glad that we can worship together wherever we are right now and let's celebrate God's love in our lives. I hear your voice even in the distance, even in the silence, even in the static. I see you move, even in the dark night, even in the half light, even in the stillness, and after the fire, and after the wind, when chaos subsides, I listen again, and after the earth shakes, you're calling me.
God, through every ups and downs that we go through, the one thing that we can always rely on is you. We surrender our worries, our anxieties, our problems at your feet because your love has never and will never fail us. Your love never fails, your love overcomes, and through your love, our lives are transformed. Let your name be lifted high in all our praises.
Day Church. Hi, IES Northwest. It's a beautiful day. I hope and pray that you are healthy, excited, and of course, ready to be blessed with the Word of God today. Last week, Sir Ferdy shared about biblical stewardship. He mentioned that stewardship, uh, there's an illustration in the Bible about what stewardship is. What is a, a biblical stewardship? According to him, that everything around us, you look front, left, right, back, up, down, everything that your eyes can see and touch, everything belongs to God. And since this everything belongs to God, God loves us, so he entrusted this to us, to our care. And since God has entrusted this to our care, we have the responsibility to manage it. All of this. Now, how do we respond to this? How to become a good steward? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 to 5 says that such confidence we have through Christ before God, not that we have are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Again, we are just stewards, we don't own it. So we should have that confidence to God, not to ourselves. We have to seek God for, Lord, give me the wisdom and the power and the strength. How will I handle this? How will I handle all these obligations, all these things on my hand, all these things on my plate? According to Wayne Coleman, he defined proper stewardship as by these phrases. He has some, a lot of questions. He has some questions like, in the past years of your Christian life experience, when you have heard the word stewardship, has your immediate reaction been more positive or more negative? Over the years, has the reaction, the negative factor grown? Does the word automatically bring to mind financial matters? Does the word seem to arouse a spirit of obligation on your part? Do the thoughts of obligation generate feelings of guilt from past encounters with this word when they are remembered? Is your first reaction that of wanting to hide your wallet or checkbook because you feel that their content is threatened? Most modern Christians who have for years heard all the standard stewardship pushings spoken in most churches would have to answer yes to many. If not all of the above questions, budget pressures within most churches force stewardship emphasis to be heavily overbalanced toward finances when the stewardship of life is properly applied. Financial performance becomes the effect of the stewardship, not the cause. So I am reminded with a verse, 1 Peter 4.10, it says, Each of you, should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. What is your gift? Or what are your gifts? How did you use them? How did you utilize them? Are you being a good steward? Responsible and accountable to accomplish it to the right purpose? in how God wants you to fulfill it? I've come across this short story uh, about the crucial importance of stewarding the gift. This is a story and it started with this. Their grandparents, grandma and grandpa, they had driven up from California one evening before topping up a gas station along the Oregon border. They purchased some snacks, gas, and as they often did, a lottery ticket. Thinking little of it, they stuffed the ticket in a pocket and continued journeying north. At their hotel that night, Grandpa stayed up to watch the news. The lottery numbers were to be announced as the numbers were picked from a whirling globe of balls. The first number matched and the second number, then the third number. At this point, he shakes Grandma awake. 
So grandma wipes her eyes. They watched the fourth, the fifth, sixth, and seventh numbers match. All seven numbers. Jaws dropped. Their minds could not ascertain what had transpired in just a few short seconds. Unimaginable, unthinkable. How much did they win? What does this mean? The host announced the winning amount that night. Grandma and Grandpa won $4.6 million, in equivalent to $65 trillion, $483 billion, or million, $300, I don't know, in, 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 in <laughs> Indonesia rupiah money, but it's around $65 trillion. After a sleepless night, they drove to their children's home and placed the lottery ticket on their dining room table. Yes, the winnings helped the family in profound ways. Their debts were paid, vacations, they had a luxurious vacations, tuitions of their grandchildren were covered. But there's a dark story. There's something, a profound gift that created momentary bliss, eventually led to bickering, infighting, and anger in the family. After nearly 50 years of marriage, imagine grandma and grandpa's marriage ended. Family members stopped talking and a cold bitterness took over. This is a difficult story. And by the grace of God, and only by the grace of God, healing and reconciliation has begun in their family. Yet, the fact remains, no one knew how to steward such a gift. What's the lesson? Are we being faithful with the things, even small ones, given to us? Are there any great breakthroughs that you have encountered just recently? How are you going to be the good steward of that breakthrough so others will be blessed too? Are we being so self-centered? Remember that these gifts are, well, all things on earth are borrowed. We don't have it forever. We'll not have it. When we go to the grave six feet below the ground, we cannot have our cars, we cannot have our mansions, let loose of any possessions. Because if it is not handled property, properly, it will be gone. Relationships will be broken. There will be unforgiving heart, anger in the family. We have to learn how to accept the fact that God trusts us as good stewards, faithful stewards. God has entrusted us all these things because He has faith in us. Are we faithful? Are we faithful to God as well of what He has entrusted us? Think of that gift that you can share to others. We don't live for, all, for ourselves. We don't live for, for, for us only. We have family. For parents here listening, are you being good stewards of God's precious gifts, your children? How are we going to impact them? For teachers, are you being good stewards of handling and creating that wonderful relationship of a teacher and student's relationship? Colleagues, how are we standing up for our position? Whatever is your responsibility, whatever role that you have, that's your gift. Whatever you are doing right now, that's your gift. Ask yourself, am I doing it faithfully to God? And remember, you don't have it forever. So we have to share it. We have to hand it down to our next generation. For parents, hand down the faithfulness to your children. Leaders of the church, Hand it down to the next generation. Because again, we don't own this life. Later, we will meet our Father in heaven. Are we excited to hear good and faithful servant? Because I have given you this gift, even a small one, I can trust you. You were able to produce it. You were able to make it abundant. Because you think that you cannot do it alone. We do it with God. Whatever God has, has entrusted us, 
God is our master. We are just tenants. So we have to remember that. And this is a reminder for all of us that being good stewards, faithful stewards, we don't take the confidence to ourselves, but be confident to God, to the faithful purpose of God into our lives. You are not an accident. Yes, you. Your life has a purpose. You have a lot of gifts that you have to share to others. Don't, don't, you know, don't take hold of it so much. Let loose so it will flourish. And that's how good stewardship is. We are able to serve others. We are able to, 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 to bring out ourselves to others. And you will just see the wonders of God on how He will bless your life. And I hope that you will be blessed. This week is a week of wonderful stewardship. Whatever your role is, do to the best of you can. You have, you are gifted. God loves you, and God has trust and has faith in you that you can do it. When that gift is given to you, do your best. If you have the gift of sharing the good news, do it in the ministry. If you have the gift of singing, do it with all your heart. And then again, know that it is from God. Be responsible. Be faithful servants. Be faithful stewards so that God will increase you. And that's all for today. I pray that you will be blessed for our service today and God will speak to you and He will make your life abundant. Thank you. Hi Church, welcome to IES Northwest. We are so glad that you are here with us today and I hope everyone is safe and well. And now, all of our services are conducted online. We encourage that all of you to invite our friends and family members to join our services. As a church family, it is important for us to connect with each other. With that, we have several fellowships online. For more details, please contact through this WhatsApp number. Please transfer your tithes and offerings to this bank account number. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 reminds us that God loves a cheerful giver. So, be joyful when you are giving to the Lord. IS Northwest relies on the generosity of our God through His people. We encourage you to participate in the ministry of IS Northwest in reaching out to the people in need of the Gospel. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful opportunity that you have given to us to worship you today. We pray that you open up our ears and open up our hearts to receive your word. And also, Father, we also lift um, these tithes and offerings into your hands to expand your kingdom, and they are for your glory alone. We surrender our lives into your hands. We surrender the service into your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the story of the parable of the bags of gold in Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 to verse 30, there are two characters, one item and one location of punishment. These characters are the master and the servants, 
The item is the bag or bags of gold. The location is the darkness or the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. First, I like to talk about the place of punishment. This place is provided for those servants who are not responsible for the one bag of gold. Matthew chapter 25 verse 30 says, And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This place is said to be outside. If it is outside, then there is inside. The question is, what is inside? Inside what? And what is outside? We can draw a conclusion that the servants who are responsible will be placed inside. Many times in the gospel, Jesus talked about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Jesus talked about the next chapter of reality, about what is coming to replace the existing reality. Let us see what the scriptures say about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Jesus here simply revealed the truth that there was a coming kingdom. And this kingdom was fast approaching. And everyone had to repent to be included in this kingdom. One must repent. One must turn away from their wicked ways to be part of this kingdom or to stay inside this kingdom. Those who do not repent will be placed outside of the kingdom of heaven. It is important for all men to hear what Jesus said, to listen to what Jesus declared. Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. In Mark chapter 1 verse 15, it says, The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Here we learn that the kingdom of God can only be entered when one repents and believes the good news. Repenting and believing the good news are one. They cannot be separated one with the other. Believing in the gospel, believing in Jesus Christ, believing in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross cannot be separated with repentance cannot be separated with turning away from sins and the world. Turning away from sins must be done at the same time with believing in the gospel. Believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he rose again on the third day to rule his kingdom. From these verses in Matthew and Mark, we learn that to be inside the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, one must repent and believe in the gospel. Those who do not repent, those who do not believe in the gospel will be placed outside of the kingdom where there is darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us all hear the cry of Jesus Christ. Let us all pay attention to the word of Jesus Christ. Warning everyone to repent so that we will be able to avoid this place of darkness. 
to avoid this place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Secondly, I like to talk about the master. Let us read Matthew chapter 25 verse 14. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Verse 15. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to their ability. Then he went on his journey. Okay. This master gave the servants something that belonged to him. The precious gold belonged to the master. The gold did not belong to the servants. From this reading, we come across the word entrusted. The master entrusted the servants with something precious. The master here required his servants stewardship. He entrusted his servants. He required their stewardship on his precious item. Then in verse 19 says, After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. So here we we'll learn that the master gave something. The master required stewardship. The master returned to settle accounts. Who is this master? Let us see what the scripture says. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 here says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one, despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus here talked about choosing our master. One must choose carefully who they want to serve, who they want to become a servant of. We must listen to the word of Jesus Christ carefully. We must pay attention to his spoken words. Here Jesus told us to choose God as our master. We must become God's servant. If we did not choose God, then we would be a servant of other things. We either become a servant of God or a servant of money. Or a servant of other things other than God. And everything other than God always leads to money. So basically here Jesus said, if we did not choose God, then we, we would be a servant of money. However, there is one true master of everything, regardless what men think and choose. There is only one God over everything. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10 to 11, it says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. God is the master of everything. He gave everything to the world. He created the world. He created us. He gave us everything. And he will come back to settle accounts with us. Not just us, but with all men. He will come back to settle accounts with everyone who ever lived, everyone who is now alive, and everyone who will come into existence in the future. All men, big and small, rich and poor, educated and uneducated, strong and weak, must face him and be responsible for what we did on earth before him. Let us hear and pay attention carefully 
to the truth. Okay, now let us talk about the servants. From the reading, we learn that the servants knew that everything they had came from the master. They were only entrusted. They were only steward of their master's possessions. Everything belonged to the master. Let us read the following scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14 says, To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth, and everything in it. Psalm chapter 89 verse 11 says, The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. Job chapter 41 verse 11 says, Who has a claim against me that I must pay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. We read again Psalm chapter 95 verse 5 says, The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form dry land. Psalm 50 verse 10 says, For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle of a thousand hills. Let us read Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. It says, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. From these readings, we know that we are only servants to Him. We are only entrusted with everything that we have. Everything does not belong to us. It belongs to God, our Master. And one day he will come to settle accounts with us. We are only servants. Let us pray that God will give us humility. Nothing for us to boast about. It may appear that we have something. It may appear that we have much. We may appear that we own many things. But in truth, we are only entrusted. We are only steward. We have nothing of ourselves. Everything belongs to God. Lastly, let us talk about the bag of gold or bags of gold. The master gave bags of gold to his servants. However, there was one bag of gold that was so crucial and important that when the servant misused it, he would be thrown into the place of darkness. So tragic. It was so scary. Therefore, it was so important not to, not to abuse this one gift. It would have super heavy consequences. Yes, God gives so many things to us. But among all his gifts, there is one gift. There is one important gift, more important than other things, that if one abuses it, the person cannot be part of the kingdom of heaven. The only place suitable for those who abuse this one gift is the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth cast doubt to the darkness forever and ever. Let us look at the scripture what this one bag of gold is. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, it says that the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life the man became a living being. After God sculpted the body of man, it was still dead, not alive. God gave his breath of life to man. 
and the man became alive. God gave the most precious gift to man, the gift among all other gifts, the most important gift and the most precious one more than others. It is the gift of life. This gift of life is entrusted to us. We are steward of the gift of life. What are we doing about it? Are we abusing it? Are we burying our life in the ground? Matthew chapter 25 verse 25 says, So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Jesus here told us not to bury our life in the ground or in the dirt. We abuse our life if we bury our life in the dirt. The Bible often talks about separating ourselves from the world. We do not belong to the world. We must be different with the world. By following the world, by imitating the world, by not separating ourselves from the world, we are abusing the life that God gave us. The master will one day come to settle accounts with us. He wants to see that we are a good steward of the gift of life that he gave to us. The only way to become a good steward of the gift of life is by taking our life and committing it to Jesus Christ. In the beginning, we were talking about repentance, about believing the gospel. It is the same thing here. A good steward of life will honor the words of Jesus Christ. We must repent from our sins every day. And we must believe in the gospel, in the good news, in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. When we do this, we will be part of the kingdom of God. Our place is not the place of darkness. Our place is not outside, but inside the kingdom of God. This one bag of gold must be treated responsibly. This one bag of gold is more important than other bags. It must be given to Jesus Christ. When we give this one bag of gold to Jesus Christ, then other bags will also start producing more. This one bag is the key to get other bags working and yielding good returns. Remember this one bag. If it is not treated responsibly, it will be taken away from us. And we will be placed in the place of darkness forever. The place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us pay attention to the loving words of Jesus Christ. Let us all live a life of repentance. Let us pray that God continually gives us listening ears, teachable spirit, and a repenting heart. Let us pray that God gives us humility. Let us grow in faith every day and grow in the knowledge of God. Let us observe His words. We are all His. We belong to Him. Remember, His word alone is a lamp unto our path and a light unto our feet. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you at this moment. We thank you for your message. We thank you for your word. And Lord Jesus, teach us to keep your words. And Lord Jesus, we want to observe your words. Store up your words in our hearts. And Lord Jesus, bless everyone who have listened with an open heart. Bless everyone, Lord Jesus. 
We want to become a good steward of the breath of life that you gave to every one of us. We like to continually commit our lives into your hands. We belong to you. You are our master and our life must glorify your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking upon your shoulders our mistakes, our failures, our iniquities. And now we are justified. We are forgiven. Keep continually blessing us, Lord Jesus. Bless every one of us who has come to this service. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We worship you. We receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let us raise our hands for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you His favor and give you His peace. Now and forevermore, everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining our online church service today. God bless you and live for Jesus always.